Okay, we're rolling. Okay. John, not that hat. Come on. All right. This is serious. Good? Good. All right. Hey, North Coast. Good to see you, or almost see you through the camera lens here. Uh, delighted you came to join us today. Uh, we want to worship the Lord and hear from His Word and get some great music and encourage your heart. Beautiful day on the coast, and I thought we'll just say hello from the outside here. Um, hey, I want to thank the team too, the, the volunteers and Brandon and, and all the guys that are helping to get these shots together. Um, and I want to thank you, North Coast, for your support of us during this difficult time. Please know that we are praying for you. We love you. Uh, you can call in. You can talk to our pastors if you need some help or encouragement. Please go online. We have a daily devotional that we're doing right now. And uh, again, we miss all of you. And we're, we're hoping that the Lord will hasten the day that we can all be together. Uh, let's enjoy our worship time together. Hey, uh, Pastor Mike's going to open up our service today in prayer. Thanks, John. Would you all please pray with me? God Almighty, thank you for this time that we do have together. Even though it's not together uh, in physical fashion, but that we are together because we are united through your Holy Spirit. Lord, I do ask that you would uh, empower Mark as he leads us in, in some music, in some worship, that we truly can celebrate the hope that we have in you, Jesus. And I do ask also that you would give John to some boldness, the words to say that you want him to say as he teaches us through your word. God in heaven, may you allow us to know of your peace and your comfort through this time that just brings some heartache, some confusion, some fear, and just not knowing what's going to happen. Thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus through all things. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
Hey guys, last Sunday in our study of scripture together, we talked about some of the key tools that God has given to you and to me to enable us to handle the tough times uh, like coronavirus that we're going through right now. And, and the whole point was we're tempted to focus on negative circumstances, which is not where we need to go, coronavirus included. Instead, we've got to stay focused upon the things that Christ has given to us, the things that we've got. Let me just hit them for you real quickly in the way of review. Uh, we learned that through Christ, we have a God who understands us. He gets the fact that we're in a time of, of you know, pressure and a panic because of this, this whole pandemic thing. Uh, he's a God who has a plan. He knows what's happening, and that plan includes us, and he wants to use us through this time. You got prayer, which means that God is listening. I hope that you know we're talking to him, and, and he'll, he'll bring his power into our lives as we pray. You got a partner, and that's a reference to the Holy Spirit who is with us all the time. You got people, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, and even though we can't gather in the same place at the same time and hug one another, we can still reach out through social media and different things, and a lot of you guys are doing that, which is so fantastic. Again, you got purpose. Uh, God wants to use us as his witness, his testimony, and then truthfully, you got peace, the peace that Jesus gives. And uh, he says, man, I give you peace, but it's not the kind of peace that this world gives, which is broken and busted up. And like when cor coronavirus hits, it's out the window. So those are the things that God has given to us so that we can handle the tough times that we're going through. And, and if we do that, we're going to have victory in Christ victory in Christ. What exactly is that? I mean, preachers love to talk about victory in Christ. I know I do. But a lot of times we, we use these catchphrases and we're truthfully not even quite sure what they mean. And so I've been spending a little time this week thinking about it. And this is what I believe the Bible teaches us in terms of what victory in Christ is all about. It really involves four things. And the first one is this. Victory in Christ is, well, it's having Jesus right at your side all the time. I mean, he's there. He's with us. He's with us all the time. And I, I love this verse out of the Old Testament. It's Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. I paraphrased it just a little bit, but it goes like this. Your God is present with you. He is a victorious, liberating warrior. He is there to save you. Happy to have you. He will calm you with his love and he will delight you with his songs. Isn't that amazing? God, Jesus, will calm you and he will delight you. Man, it reminds me of when I was a kid and my mom or my dad would try to calm me down and, and get me focused on something that would make me smile or make my heart happy. Uh, it, it's even the language of lovers where someone you love so very much and they're upset and you just want to help calm them down and bring peace to their life. And then you want to get them focused on something else that just brings a, a smile to their face and joy to their heart because it's the thing that delights them. That's the way Jesus is with you and with me. In our day-to-day -day walk with him, he is a God who wants to calm us down and then delight us with himself he is the victorious warrior who has come to save us. Zephaniah says, Jesus is happy to have you and me in his family. So when we talk about victory in Christ, it's Jesus right at our side all the time. Secondly, though, it's having the ability to live right, to live life rather, the right way, which is God's way. Living life the right way, God's way. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, the apostle John wrote these words. He said, every child of God has power over the sins of this world. And our victory, and the word for victory there is nike. We'll come back to that in just a second. Our victory, our nike over the sins of this world is through our faith. Nike is the Greek word for victory. We get our English word nike from it. Jesus is the source of our victory. He can help us live faithfully, doing the right sort of life. And man, I want to live faithfully following Jesus. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I doubt that I can. 
And then I hear a verse like this, and it says that I absolutely can. That's our victory in Christ. He is with us at our side all the time, seeking to calm us and delight us. He is with us all the time so that we can experience victory over sin. And when we trip up, when we fall over, when we fall into that temptation, he forgives us, he picks us up, he dusts us off, and he says, man, I'm still with you no matter what. Third thing about victory in Christ, well, it is this, it's kind of cool. It's having God's gift of what we'll call it an eventual, perfect immortality. God's gift of an eventual, perfect immortality. What am I talking about? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 and 57, the Apostle Paul speaking to us, he said, Christians are mortal bodies uh, that, by the way, obviously can die. They're going to be transformed into immortal bodies, bodies that are perfect, bodies that will never die. And when it happens, that's when the promise of Scripture will be completely fulfilled. Death, you are swallowed up in victory. Wow. Victory. Death is gone. That's a quote from Isaiah chapter 26 and in verse 8. And as you continue in the first Corinthians passage, Paul says, in one single victorious stroke, sin, guilt, death, all three will be gone forever. This is the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ to us. And then he says, man, thank God. God. So our victory is Jesus is with us all the time. He walks with us through this life, giving us victory over sin and forgiving us when we do fall, which happens to all of us. But one of these days when we die, we're going to go to heaven and we will receive these immortal, perfect bodies. Now, I want to say this to you in the way of application especially when we're talking about coronavirus and its impact upon our society. Hey, the truth is, it's not that I want to die, but I am not afraid to die. And I'm not expecting, as a follower of Jesus, to have death happen to me today. But man, I've got some amazing, some pretty great expectations of what it'll be like when I die and I enter into heaven and I receive this immortal body from our Lord. Right now we have a, a lady in our church. She's over in a hospital in Portland. She's 80 some years old. Precious lady who's been a volunteer in our church office for decades. Uh, her name is Audrey. Some of you might know her. Well, Audrey's getting very, very close to leaving this world and going into the presence of Christ. And one of the things that's going to happen to Audrey is when she gets there, all of the difficulties that she's been dealing with, uh, physically, emotionally, all of that stuff's going to be gone, and she will be blessed with a perfect, immortal body. How great is that? I'm, I'm kind of jealous, to tell you the truth, and it's, and it's, uh, it's going to be amazing for her. Fourth thing about our victory in Christ, well, guys, it, has, it involves having the joy of an amazing, absolutely amazing forever. Now here's the deal, when I say that, there's this amazing forever out there that's coming our way. We're gonna have immortal bodies, but that's only half the deal. The other side to that coin is that we're going to have an amazing forever that these immortal bodies of ours get to enjoy. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 20. He, that's God Almighty, he brings full justice, which means he's going to make everything right when he brings this final justice, and it's going to come with his final victory. And so when Jesus talks about full justice and final victory, what is this final victory that he's, that he's telling us about? Well, what the Lord is referencing is basically the end of time as we know it. And when this world wraps up, uh, Scripture tells us that God is going to create a whole new creation, a whole new universe, a new heavens and a new earth is how Scripture describes it. And so he's going to take this new creation at the end of time. 
He's going to combine it with the perfection of heaven. And then we, in our mortal bodies, are going to be able to enjoy and experience as and explore this amazing forever that God will have created for us. The Apostle Peter <clears throat> put it this way in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. He says, wow, he says, we are looking for what God has promised, that new heaven and that new earth, and only what is right, only what is good will be there. Let me just read you real quick from Revelation chapter 21. I've, I've opened my scripture to it, and it's right here. But listen to, to this description out of the book of Revelation about this new universe. John the Apostle, who has this vision of this new creation, says, Then I see a new heaven, and I see a new earth. For the old heaven and the new earth, well, they have disappeared. And then he goes on to say, I hear a loud shout coming from the throne of God, saying, Look! God's home is now with his people. He will live with us. He will be, we will be his people, and he himself will be our God. He will be with us. He will wipe away every single tear from our eyes. And there'll be no more death. There'll be no such thing as sorrow. There won't even be any pain or crying. All these things, John says, are gone forever. And then in the vision, he continues, and he says, the one sitting on the throne, Jesus Christ, says, look, I'm making it all brand new. And then he said to me, that's, that would be the Apostle John, write this down, because what I'm telling you here and now is absolutely trustworthy. It is totally true. And then if you skip on down to verse 7 in Revelation 21, he says this, all, listen to this, all who are victorious, this is our victory in Christ, followers of Jesus will inherit all of these blessings of God, and he says, I will be your God, and the truth is, you will be my children. So wow, when we're talking about victory, we're talking about Jesus with us all the time, the ability to live life the right way, which is God's way, eventually to receive perfect immortal bodies and then to enjoy them as we explore and experience this new universe that God has in mind for you and for me. That's our victory in Christ. But I want to warn you something about something. I want to warn you about something. There are some, well, there's a virus, a coronavirus of the soul that can attack us and it can cause us to forget about the victory that we have in Jesus. And so let me tell you what that virus is like so you can not only know what it looks like, but you can also know God's antidote to it. And the virus shows up, I would say, mainly in kind of like in four strains. And the first strain would be, well, it would be anger. Anger. And anger is that temptation that I face, that you face, uh, when, you know, all that's going on with this stupid blankety blank coronavirus, and it just makes me so blankety blank mad that I just get totally ticked off. <laughs> you, get, you see what I'm saying? Anger, man. It, it rises quickly. And I can get angry at the Chinese for all of this stuff. I can get angry at the president or the politicians because they didn't do enough to protect us. I can get angry at the guy who comes to my doorstep and exposes me to coronavirus. I can get angry at the people who are not taking this seriously and I can get angry at the people who are not taking it seriously enough. And guys, here's the deal. The more angry I get internally in my soul, the more this anger seeps out of me and it hurts those who are around me. It's a soul sickness, this anger. In James chapter one and verses 19 to 20, 
the Apostle James said to believers, he says, Christian family, we know that we've got to listen more and speak a whole lot less. We need to be slow in becoming angry because our anger, well, it doesn't help us live the right way. It doesn't help us live the way that God wants. And so here's the antidote to the anger strain of this virus. It's from Ephesians chapter four and verses 31 and 32, where the Bible says this, you gotta choose. You just have to flat out choose not to be mad, not to be angry. And don't shout angrily or say things that are gonna hurt others. And Paul just says, man, that's evil. Don't be that way. (laughs) Instead, decide to give kindness and God's love to each other, and if need be, well then forgive each other the same way that God forgave you in Jesus Christ. So hey, my friend Brandon, we're co-workers here at North Coast, Uh, he told me this week about a story that happened to him in one of our stores here locally, and uh, Brandon, come on up if you would, man, and and join me, and I just, I want him to share with you the story of uh, how he had a victory over anger. You ready? So, okay, good, good, good. All right, thanks, 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 thanks. Social distance. Absolutely. Yes. So, guys, this week I was uh, at a store um, just shopping for groceries, and we all know how crazy it is out there. Uh, there's nothing left on the shelves sometimes, and people are just really high strung. And uh, I had a question from my mom about uh, Western Union and decided, well, I'm actually at a store that, you know, provides Western Union stuff. And so I decided I was going to go over and just ask him a real quick question. And I get in line and I stand on one of their X's, you know, to keep the social distance and, you know, do your own part to to stay out of other people's way. And uh, I was standing there and this lady just looks at me and just goes, we're closed. And I see this sign that says, we open at 7 a.m. and it's one in the afternoon. And she says, we are closed. And I was like, okay. I just have a real quick question though. And she just said, I'm not answering your question. We are closed. And there was this little part of me that was just frustrated because it was just a real quick question about something. But then I just look at the stress on her face and I can tell that she has been stressed out for the last two weeks trying to figure out how to deal with coronavirus while managing a store. And then I look at all the other people who are working and I can just see the stress and pain in their eyes. And I was just like, you know what? You're right, you are closed from my stupid little question because there is so much going on. And so I chose in that moment just to give grace and to not fight back and just go, I have a really simple question but instead just go, I get it, you need your space. And so I walked away. Oh no. <laughs> More social distance. <laughs> so guys, I appreciate that story because I gotta be honest with you, <clears throat> I've had stuff like that happen to me in stores and I usually wanna just raise the bar and say, okay, you're not gonna win, you are gonna, you're gonna serve my needs and, and I just, uh, I don't know, Brandon's story was it was encouragement to me. Hey, John, calm down. Don't let anger get a hold of you because it'll rob you of your victory in Christ. Guys, there's a a second strain to this virus, though. You got anger, but the second strain is gossip and rumor. Gossip and rumor. And there's a lot of that going around right now with this coronavirus thing. It just seems that everybody has a rumor or a bit of gossip and things that they like or don't like that people are doing. And you know what? We all tend to get sucked right into this rumor mill. I mean, I think of what uh, Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 18 in verse, in verse 8. He says, man, gossip is so tasty. How we love to swallow it. We get sucked into it. We all tend to gossip, but the truth is, few things can wound people more than gossip. Few things can make matters worse more than the breeding of gossip and confusion. Fear and and, and panic comes as a result, which is why God hates it when we gossip. He tells us in Romans chapter one and verses 28 to 29, people refuse to keep in mind the true knowledge about God. 
And then they start doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And then they are filled with all kinds of wickedness. And then, listen, he says, and then with this wickedness in them, they go out and they gossip and they speak evil of others. Wow. So what's the antidote? What's the antidote for coronavirus, of the, the coronavirus of gossip? Well, Solomon said this in Proverbs 20, 19. A gossip betrays a confidence. Avoid anyone who talks too much, who just can't keep their mouth shut, who has to gossip. Wow. So shut them down when somebody's gossiping. Don't just stand there. Shut them down. Don't listen. Walk away if need be and do not be like them. Solomon also said in in Proverbs 26, he says, you know, fire goes out for a lack of wood and quarrels will disappear when gossip stops. Paul adds in Ephesians 4.29, let what you say be good, let what you say be helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Guys, truthfully, gossip is a virus strain that has a pretty good hold in most of our lives. We want to complain. We want to gossip about people and doctors and neighbors and people at church. and we just, We're just so prone to it. We may need to spend a lot of time in humbleness and in repentance with the great physician. But I tell you this, he will enable you and he will enable me to tame our tongues. Third strain of the virus is fear. You've got anger, gossip, then there's fear. The medical precautions that we're taking for the coronavirus is one thing, but this all out panic over a coronavirus that our society is experiencing is quite another thing. You can sense it, you can feel it, Panic paralyzes the soul. It enslaves us. It keeps us from fulfilling God's calling upon our lives to serve him and to be a blessing to others. Fear, again, is a sickness of the soul. And what are you afraid of in light of our circumstances? Well, you're probably afraid for your health. Some of you are afraid for your money, your job, your retirement might be at risk. Maybe you're afraid for your loved ones. The truth is, guys, Satan works overtime to produce in us the viral strain of fear that can overtake our souls. Jesus said in Matthew 4, the devil will tempt us. Paul said in Ephesians 4, 17, the devil takes, takes every opportunity to like ensnare you. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7, we're told he wants to trap you. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 26, we're told that the devil will actually try to control your will. He will will you into fear if you will let him do that. And then in 1 Peter 5, 8, we're told that the devil is like a roaring lion. And the reason that lions roar when there's prey about is so that the prey will be paralyzed. They won't even run and they're, <laughs> they're an easy meal for the lion. He will yell at you. He will roar to get your attention and to make you afraid. So what's God's antidote for this? How can we fight against this? Well, I love 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. It's so direct. It says this, The Son of God appeared for this very purpose. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil so that you don't have to be afraid, so that that viral strain will dry up and, and go away. And then we're told in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18, where God's love is found, there will be no fear. Why is that? Because it is God's perfect love that takes the fear away. Hmm. The fourth strain that will rob us of our victory, fourth viral strain, is selfishness. Um, it can sicken your soul and it can sicken mine. It's, it's, you know, it's when we hear these things like, hey, man, we've got to go crash the store right now because the, su- the supplies are running low. How many rolls of toilet paper, you know, can we, can we buy? 
I was cracking up in one of our staff meetings. Pastor AJ, uh, who's in charge of our uh, family ministry, said he drove by a neighbor's house. The garage door is open, and there's like these massive amount of those blocks of TP rolls that you can buy at Costco. I'm this guy who's actually hoarding them. I, that's a selfishness. I got to get as much stuff into my life before anyone else gets it. And I'm not going to share it because it is mine. That's selfishness. What does God say about this? Well, he says in James chapter 3 and verse 16, if you have selfishness in your heart, then there is disorder in your life and every evil thing. Selfishness is because, man, you're messed up. And selfishness is evil. So what's the antidote? Well, Paul says in Ephesians 4, have something to share with one who has a need. A purpose to share. Not to be selfish, purpose to share. And then he says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 18, be generous when you share. I mean, not only make it a plan that you're going to figure out how you can share with people, but be generous in that sharing, not stingy, but generous. And then, wow, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 16 kind of seals the deal for me. Share with other people, these are the sacrifices with which, well, they they are super pleasing to our God. These are the viral strains that would rob us of our victory, but God has given us the antidote in Christ. So guys, as we wrap it up today, here's, there's three things I want to give you in the way of, of takeaway. Guys, the first thing is this. Let go of the virus by trusting Jesus. Don't focus on the virus all the time. Let it go. I mean, do the right things in terms of protecting yourself physically and protecting yourself spiritually. But don't become obsessive compulsive about this. Let it go. Secondly, Grab hold of the, of the victory. Grab hold of the victory from Jesus. The victory that we've been talking about here. A Jesus who is with us. A Jesus who will help us do the right things in this life. A Jesus who is going to give us a perfect, immortal body and a wonderful, amazing place to enjoy it forever. Grab hold of your victory in Christ. And then finally, I would say, man, find your voice or lift up your voice for Jesus. What do I mean by that? I just mean start talking to people on the phone, email them, text them, go on Facebook with them, share with them what we're doing here at church in terms of social media, but use your voice to be a witness and a testimony for Jesus Christ. Guys, remember the things you've got from last week. Hold on to your victory in Christ Don't let these viral strains take any of of it away from you. Man, walk with Jesus throughout the course of this week in victory. Guys, thanks for listening. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, Pastor Mark's gonna sing a song for us. Before he does, let me pray. Lord Jesus, thanks for your word. Thanks for the challenge of it. God, I I felt these things so deeply and I pray that my brothers and sisters and anyone who's watching this will feel them as well. We have victory in you. Thank you, Lord. Protect us from the coronavirus of the soul and help us, Lord, to walk in victory with you and we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. Thanks, guys.
leading us in some awesome worship. And thank you, John, for your great message. As John was saying, especially in difficult times like these, it is so easy for all of us to let viruses like anger, gossip, fear, and our own selfishness overtake our souls. But by the grace of God, we have a cure. And that cure is Jesus because it is only through Jesus that we are victorious. When we give our lives to Jesus, we belong to Jesus. And by continually being in his word, we will be prepared and equipped for any spiritual virus that comes our way. Thank you so much, church family, for your continual financial contributions. You all are such a huge blessing to us. Of course, North Coast continues to have bills to pay and ministries to support. And so here are some ways you can give. You can do text to give by texting us at 503-738-1425 and instructions will follow to get it set up. You can also give online at our website at ncffchurch.org under give. You can give on our NCSF app. And finally, you can send in your donation by mail. Thank you so much for your love and support. If you're in a small group, let it be middle school, high school, young adults, and adults, we will be meeting online for now on a platform called Zoom. Zoom is free to download and to sign up on. So you can download Zoom onto your device and you can also access it on your computer. If you have any questions or need help, please contact your small group leader. Do you have young kids at home? Well, make sure to check out our Children's Ministries Facebook page. Search NC Kids and you should find a page with our NC Kids logo. Every Sunday morning, Pastor AJ will have a Sunday school message for the kids. And plus, there will also be Bible stories, worksheets, and other fun activities posted throughout the week. You and your kids will not want to miss these fun things. We love and miss you all, and remember, let's not let this virus infect our souls, but let our souls shine for Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your son Jesus, Lord, and that he died on the cross and conquered death, Lord. And thank you so much that it is through Jesus that we are more than conquerors. And thank you, Lord, that we are able to gather online and that you are being glorified through the web, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you just be with us all, continue to be with us, and just fill us with your peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, guys. We'll see you around on the interwebs.